Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hi, welcome to Drinking Bros. Got a special guest today. We do have a special guest today. Um, there's a, he's also wearing a special T-shirt. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like hashtag Bert from TV. It is hashtag Bert from TV. And if you want to address the elephant, here's the issue. <laughs> So we will. I meant, so I was obviously on the TV show with Bert Koontz. You oh, were. And, yes. And, and by the way, so since we've posted this picture, somebody started a hashtag Ray from TV. Oh, yes. Um, because Ray Cash Care is here. I'm in the house. I'm yes. not going to lie. Yes. It's here. I'm true. It's here. I'm here. You ladies start and gentlemen. on the show with Bert. The selection. I, yeah. I was the star of the show. <laughs> and what people need to understand is, is that I took Bert from the streets and I taught him. I mentored him. I spent countless hours with him teaching him how to portray to be an SF guy because he was okay, but I was like, no man, you gotta throw your chest out, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta be harder. So I think Bert owes me a lot. He, own, <laughs> he owes me pretty much everything that he has made himself into yeah. because of me. Because team guys are humble, we're humble, we don't wanna take the credit. Listen, this is just nonsense what he's saying. <laughs> Seals are the fucking most arrogant dudes on earth. <laughs> look at his hair. Take your hat off. Look, he's been wearing a hat for at least an hour that he's been here. Look at his fucking hair still. Two. His hair. Oh is, boy, like, that what is. What the fuck is this? That is perfect. A nice perfect. sheen. It is perfect. In, in it, in it? How do you do that? Because I was born to be a seal. If you're born to be a seal, you have great fucking hair. <laughs> you come in. You're a goddamn <laughs> physical specimen. Uh, you got perfect hair. Thank you. Through a hat. Thank you. And in your drinking, what what is it? One o'clock in the afternoon. Drinking. I am having some JMO. That yeah. is great. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm coming down off a New Orleans trip, so I'm I'm trying to hydrate. I got, we got fucking house last night. I got the uh, the vodka lemonade going on because it's summertime. It is summertime. And that's a nice little thing. That's uh, and somehow I still, Thanks for being here, buddy. Still, Thank you. And one more uh, elephant I'd like to address is how many other guests have come on with their own bobblehead? Oh, man. If you're not subscribed to the video show on YouTube, you should now. This is the first time in show history, over 450 episodes, where a guest has brought their own bobblehead. I'm surprised it wasn't me. I'm a plank owner of the bobblehead, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to use it, and I'm going to probably take it to my deathbed. Thank you. <laughs> Look, we got to start off with the hard-hitting questions first. We don't get too many Navy SEALs on the show. Uh, I, th I think you know what's on the top of everybody's mind in America right now. Go. Come on. Tell it's in, me. It's in Nevada. I don't know. Tell Rhymes me. with Area 51. Come on, brother. Let's see them aliens. No. Listen, stop. <laughs> you know what? Listen, I, if it happens, I'll be there and I'll believe. But come on, guys. This is just so I know what you're doing. It's just so stupid. You know, Area 51 is there for whatever reason it is. But no, I don't even want it's It's so stupid. I'm just going to dismiss the question. Do you know what, what, what goes on at Area 51? Because we've had some we've had some a couple seals on the show and we've asked them. We asked one on air. They declined to comment, and then one of them told us off the air. Do you know? I have no fucking clue, and I don't want to know. None. So None. You, that, and that's genuine. And even if I did know, I wouldn't tell you. But no, no, I don't know. It's nobody's business what goes Do on Do you there. think it's more dangerous to know what's going on at Area 51 or to know private information about Hillary Clinton? That's a, fucking, <laughs> that's a barn burner, brother. I don't know. Um, probably more dangerous to know about Hillary. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Like it's the... The amount of people in her life that have committed suicide. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, yeah. it's definitely a lot, but uh, it's not <laughs> as many as the, 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 the amount of people who are signed up on Facebook. No, there's like 600 To go storm people. Area 51 yeah, to ridiculous. see them aliens, brother. Yeah. Let me tell uh, you what. I want to know. I want to be there when they storm it to see what happens. That's what I yeah, want to what, say. So what do you think would happen? Because asked, I asked Anthony this last week, um, but I'm, I'm curious, because you're more of a professional. Um, than he is. Obviously. So if we wanted to be serious, what I would like to see is them set up a Gatling gun and shoot them all as they're running at them. But what I what I think would happen is they have so many assets and uh, individuals standing by. These these people would be locked up way before they got close to anything. And I mean, they would be told to stop. They would be warned. And I think there's a difference between. So I don't think they give a shit about the social media. I mean, they tell you to stop. You're going to get tased. You're going to probably get put down hard if you got something in your hand. You may be put down. I mean, they need to leave that shit alone. There's certain things that you just don't need to know about. Yeah. And I believe with all my heart, that's one of them. Just, Do you think there are aliens? Yes or no? And Area 51. Don't fucking fuck around, Ray. Come on. I would like to think there are. But if there are and we don't know, it's probably for a reason. 
like I said, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to think there are. I, I, I have a hard time believing that I'm the most intellectual thing on the, in the fucking universe. Yeah, no yeah. shit. So, but obviously, if we don't know, there's for a reason. It's for a good reason. And yeah, some things, like I said, are better left unknown because one would figure like you know as the civilian here on the show that you guys know more than the average bear like you know the rest of us dummies walking around yeah right i would figure if 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 we did capture an alien or an alien landed here right okay you would fucking know about it i would think that we would know about it like i said like you personally not me personally well being out of the loop now i mean i do some other things i think that's so many pay grades and so many uh, clearance levels above what i have you know, I know probably about as much as you do. And I mean, you know, I'll get on here. I'm not going to act like a badass seal saying I know something if I don't. I don't know. I don't want to know. Okay. If they decide they want to release the information, I think it'll be pretty fucking cool. Um, you know, we've seen enough shows where we know that, you know, we're going to have to defeat the bad guys and somehow take the earth back again because they want to come here and eat the planet or do whatever it is. But um, yeah, I just think there's certain things that people need to be left alone. And my thing is, is why now? Why now? There's... How many, six, 800 people? How many people want to storm it in there like a group? Oh, no, you're up to, no, no, no. You're up to 1.6 million Okay, now. it's 1.6 million. So my thing is, is some village idiot said, you know, I want to know what's going on at Area 51. And just like anything else, he raised was, the... Yep, it he, was him. It was it, No, it was, it, was, it was not me. <laughs> <laughs> you your, get up and walk gun. right off this podcast, <laughs> yeah. the same I as just, Bert would. <laughs> like I said, you know, things have been going on way longer than we've been around. And I just think people need to sometimes mind. I know everybody's like, well, you know, we have a right to know and this and that. I'm telling you, there's things that go on that people don't want to know about. And that's what I'm, where I'm going to leave it at. They should just mind their own fucking business, pay their taxes. Or if you're illegal aliens, get all the free shit that you get. And then we move on. Yeah. All right. So two more questions then, like things that we shouldn't know about. Okay. JFK. Got it. Government or more than one person. Mm, pass. Why? Uh, nope. So you do know. I I have an assumption of what I think. Just compare. Just so you know, Evan has put his theory out there. Uh, yeah, and but Evan's theory that is that it was Bush Senior. <laughs> I still do things where when this is told and goes on, <laughs> that people will come knocking at my fucking door. Yeah. So no. Okay. Uh, no, I can't answer that one. All right, last one then. And, okay. And this will see if you're a real OG. Um, in 1938. Okay. I, we heard, Dan, Dan can attest to this, we heard that FDR ran a sub four minute mile and then he never had polio. No. Nah. I'm, <laughs> I'm totally fucking with you. I didn't have, I didn't even know what to do with that one. God bless him. That would be badass, but no. No, but uh, off air, will you tell us? Let me ask you that. Yeah, off air, I'll tell you what okay, I great. think. I do. I'll great. Tell you. Great. Now we're going to get tortured two months from now because this asshole told us shit that he wasn't supposed to. Thanks, Ross. We're I'm, f- I'm fine with it. Yeah, tor- we've, again, we've had a couple seals on the show. I, we asked them some questions on air and they were like, look, ask us off. And like at one point we were at uh, Twin Peaks restaurant. This won't give any way, anything away. And someone told us, hey, man, here's what's going on at uh, Area 51. There's yeah. other places, whatever. And I was like, fuck off. Um, so... It was great. It was great to know that somebody knows. Yeah. Like I said, there's things going on. We'll leave it at that. But people think they want to know, but they don't. I think it's more likely that there's just giant fucking rack servers like there were at Fort Meade. And yeah, Maryland that's what he says, that, it, that it's rack servers. Yeah. That's yeah. what's going on in the mountains in Colorado. That's what's been going on at, at the NSA in Maryland for years. I don't think it's anything. No, I think, I think it's something about four foot three. Uh, <laughs> very green. Maybe a, a gray hue to it. Hue. Uh, black, huge black Bluish eyes. Hue. And, uh, and I think we're going to find out real soon. We're less than 60 out, kids. We're less than 60 out. No matter how hard you try, you Jared can't is, stop us now. Jared is actually organizing a defense force. And I think it's because the primary defense force at Area 51 is probably Air Force Security Forces. Yeah. Which means they're going to need some help. Yes, I agree. Uh, and Jared's offered his services, luckily. As yeah. Is well. JTAC and... The Drinky Bros community, so that's good. <laughs> Get a few drinks in and start calling it some air support yeah. airstrikes. He's like, oh, shit, that little was left, that guy. Little left, little <laughs> left. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, for people who aren't familiar with you at home, yeah. uh, obviously Navy SEAL. Yep. Um, what year? W- when did you go in? Where did you serve? Uh, let's see. I graduated Bud's class 200. That was August, I think, 23rd of 1990. Christ, I hope I get this right. Uh, end of 95 or four. But Bud's class 200, legit. 
Uh, I served on the East Coast teams. I was a uh, SDV team two. So literally, I jumped in the coffin of death, a little black submersible sub. It's um, like a one man sub, basically, right? Yeah, it can actually hold six. That's oh, not that's not classified six, stuff anymore. Okay. Speeds and stuff are. Um, but yeah, it's two people in the front, four people in the back, and we make house calls. That's what we do underwater. So we launch from a, a sub. Okay. Uh, like 30, a torpedo. Yeah. Well, not kind of, but there, there you have a, um, a sub. You have a dry deck shelter. So yeah. think of an underwater garage. We pull out at 30 feet, we launch up, we go to work. We come back, go down, or the sub will come up. We get back in, and it's Miller time. So that's what we do. Long story short, you know, we, awesome. make, we plant things on things, make things go away, and then we come back, and no one knows about it. God damn it, I love that. Mm-hmm. I you love know that. What, what, what it, made you get into it? Because uh, when, when you said 95, mm-hmm. most of the people on the show was, was 9-11 for them. Where they were yeah. like, hey, man, yep. I, I'm, I'm going all in for the country, and yeah. fuck everybody, and, and this is why. 95, I'm curious, because we were kind of, uh, the Iraq, the first Iraq war with yep. uh, Bush, very quick, over very quick. What was going on that made you want to join? Well, with me, it was an internal battle. So, you know, we spoke about this before, had a horrible childhood, you know, and this isn't a boo-hoo, poor me, any of this shit, you know, just mentally, physically, emotionally, um, physically, you know, beat the fuck out of my whole life. Uh, father was murdered at 11. Mother, I still don't have a relationship with her, but you know. Like I told you guys before, instead of, uh, you know, bitching about it, moaning about it, I decided to take a stand. And when I was about 19 years old, um, I was reading, and, you know, I wish I knew what book it was because it would give so much more meaning, but I'm not going to bullshit you. I was reading this book about like fucking Navy SEALs and these guys in my eyes were like seven feet tall, which they're not. Um, and they could do all these amazing things, which they can. And I said, you know what? That's for me because... All my life, you know, I was getting kicked down, told I was nothing, you know, you're never going to mount anything. And then all of a sudden I went into the recruiters and I said, listen, and he, I saw this and I was like, I want to fucking do that. He even told me, I don't think you can do that. You know, I took the ASVAB test. I'm not going to lie to you. We both, we've all agreed I'm pretty. Um, back in the day, I wasn't the smartest tool in the shed when it came to doing like mathematical equations, you know, like if you're on a train going 50 miles an hour east and another one's fucking 60 miles an hour going west, when do they collide? I don't know. I was 19. I'd never been on a train. I don't know. Right. So I had to do all this stuff and I had to, you know, and that's when the journey started. I just said, you know what? I'm going to do something. And what I was really saying was, is I'm going to believe in myself and a big fuck you to everybody. I mean, everybody in my life said, you'll never do it. And I just said, Roger that. So I just took that negativity and that anger and I fucking used it for fuel. And that's, and I'm not looking back, you know, that was one thing, you know, and I just keep I love proving people wrong. You know, I love, you know, I'm here. People told me before, oh, you're never, okay, Roger that, motherfuckers, here I am, you know? Right. You're not going to be on the big podcast. You're not going to be on TV. You're not going to mentor Burt Koontz. You're not going to, it was a joke, <laughs> yeah. a joke, guys. Um, <laughs> you're not going to do the things that you do, and I love, it's, it's, it fuels me, proving people fucking wrong. I've always been the underdog, you know? I'm five foot seven, I'm 205 pounds now, but back in the day, man, I was five seven, about 160 pounds, fucking wet, um, you know, had an attitude, had a chip on my shoulder and I made the conscious decision at 19. I looked in the mirror and I have an acronym. You know, I, we'll talk about this later. I do these boot camps, and mm-hmm. all I do is I call people. I look them right in the face and say, you're a bitch, you're a bitch, you're a bitch, you're a bitch. And I go over and over with that. And then when they graduate my courses, I say, now you've become the bitch and people don't understand it. Well, bitch to me is you're weak. You know, you don't have what it takes. You got, you know, you got a pussy when you're supposed to be a man. No offense, ladies. But then when you graduate something or you achieve it, I tell people, you've become the bitch. And they go, I don't get it. The B, you've become. The I, intellectually sound. You've become T, trainable, right? You got the C, you become a communicator. And the H is you become hard as fuck. And then if I have a group, it's ES. I say, now you're a bunch of bitches. And I go, especially in such a short amount of time. So people understand that now because I was going through life as a bitch, not the bitch. And I know people are like, I don't get it graduate something that no one else can do, do things that no one else can do, apply that acronym to what the fuck you do and you'll get it, you know? And I just put a course on it, people get it. And they're walking around now going, dude, I'm the bitch. I mean, corporate CEOs have it in their office. I'm the bitch, you know? I mean, I'm an HR fucking nightmare. Yeah. But sometimes people need to be slapped in the face and that's what I do. I'm here, I don't hold punches, you know? Dan knows me, I tell it Mm -hmm. like it is and you either love me or you hate me and I... One of my superpowers is I don't give a fuck. I just don't give a fuck. I'm not going to change who I am. 
Was there a point as you're going through all of this stuff mm -hmm. as, as a child? Because uh, I imagine it's it's this way for a lot of people where you could have gone the other way and just said, woe is me. Fuck it. I'm giving up and throwing in the towel. Was there a moment like that for you? Yes. The first, um, I call it the pinnacle moment in my life. I was 19 years old. I can remember it like it was yesterday. And what's funny is I can't remember what I had for fucking lunch last week, mm -hmm. but, um, I was still living with my mom. Um, she was married. She was like on her fourth marriage and I was drinking, doing drugs, doing all this shit. And I looked in the mirror. I had, I had my own bathroom. In the house we lived in this ranch out in Carroll County and I looked in the mirror like I told you my father was murdered when he was when I was 11 and when I looked in the mirror as God is my witness I didn't see me I saw him I saw the womanizer I saw the drug addict I saw the biker and I was getting in all kinds of fucking trouble I was going to college community college literally I was trying to get a degree in chasing pussy that's all I was doing yep. I didn't care and I looked in there and I just said that's where I came up with that whole acronym is dude I am a bitch. I am becoming the man that I refuse to be. And what I tell people is you or I, we're the only ones that can change that. There's no external help. You know, some journeys you just got to do on your own. And I, I said no more. And I mean, I'm telling you, I cut cold fucking Turkey. I stopped drinking. Um, I got out of the military, excuse me. I got out of the, uh, college. I, I literally applied for, uh, the Navy Lily boot camp. They were like, you don't have what it takes to be a Navy SEAL right now. I qualified to be two things, a cook and a fucking medic. That tells you a lot about our medical system in the military. But I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And instead of taking like six months and all this shit, they were like, when can you get me out the fucking door? They're like, well, it's unheard of, but we can do two weeks. Where do I sign? I wanted to get away from that fucking life as fast as I could. I wrote my mother a letter telling her how I was going to prove her wrong, how I wasn't the piece of shit that she always called me and I still have that letter to this day because she gave it back to me when I graduated um, boot camp. So and that's my fuel, man. That's what I do every day. You know, that's why people always laugh at me and they, why do you got these fucking crazy shoes on? I, I couldn't find a pair of shoes with lines on them. I was called, I was a sheep line for too long. I had the fucking warrior instinct, but I was a bitch and I wasn't applying it. So now what I do is I call myself the sheep line. Now I'm the fucking line. Now I, when I roar. So whenever I have doubt, I look down at my shoes. I wear it in suits. I wear it everywhere. I look down and people are like, you know, I tell them the story and then I tell them, I don't fucking care what you think because you're probably still a fucking sheep. Yeah. And, and that's what it was. But it was at 19 um, going through community college. 19 years old. And then how many years did you serve? I served uh, 12 years and six months and then jumped off and did some consulting uh, yeah, you did. for a long time. Uh, so it's for the audio listeners, there were some air quotes around. Yeah, that some consulting. air quotes. And you worked with uh, Black Rifle CEO Evan Hafer for a little. Bit, I worked right? with Chef for a very long time, and let me tell you what I, I don't. I don't suck dick. I'm happily married. My wife's hot. Uh, <laughs> Aaron is a true fucking warrior, uh, mind, body, and and spirit. Um, he is a guy that you do want to get in a fight with. I'll tell you. I'll just. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to give too much gouge, but that motherfucker can shoot, move, and communicate. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's got some, he's Evan got is, some go go in him. Evan, <laughs> Evan's one of the best handgun shooters I've ever seen in my life. No shit. I, you know what's funny? Everybody I, I come across, like in public, says mm. the same thing who yeah. has worked with Evan or been yeah. around him or so. And they're like, dude, Evan's the best there is. Like long guns, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that can challenge him, but I've never seen anybody shoot a handgun like him, and, honestly. And to add to the story, I crossed paths with Matt Best years ago doing something similar. And my story goes, I beat him at ping pong, and his story is he beat me. So I'd like to officially oh, we challenge. Oh, we got to get a rematch. Oh. I'd fucking officially challenge him. You know, on this show, because I look, I beat him in skee ball. He came back. I don't know if he practiced. I'm assuming he did. We're onesie onesies, and we're we're going for that. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously his book is <laughs> is on pre sale now, about to come out next month. Yep. Thank you for my service. In there, there's a line about seals saying you guys have enough cool guy books like, well, I hope he dedicated I hope he dedicated his ping pong knowledge to me there should be a, a quote in there so <laughs> oh, I'm calling you chapter. out I know there I'm calling you I know you can't see me I'm calling you out Matt Best <laughs> that's fucking hilarious I wonder if there's going to be ski ball on the uh, cruise I hope so because you guys can you and Matt can yeah did you hear about the Stranger Bros cruise there. Yeah. I did hear about it is your several, wife letting you go? Probably not. Several uh -huh. hundred of our fans. She's are going. not letting you go. Your wife's not letting you go on it, that thing. Well, if she doesn't listen to this, I can always tell it is it's a business trip. <laughs> you bring it to it is a business trip. It's a business trip yeah. from Galveston down to Cozumel. Yeah. And then and back again. 
And uh, we had a bunch of folks who were who ended up getting deployed because of the Iran sitch. Yeah. Um, so some rooms opened up. So you can go to drinkingbros.com and sign up for the cruise. Yeah, and through the end of August, actually, you can still sign up. Correct. When is it? When does yeah. it take off? Uh, it um, takes off uh, September, September 12th. September 12th, yeah. Yeah. Nope. Ah. I'll be consulting. Oh, you will? Okay. Yeah, I'll be consulting. Okay. Which is probably best for everyone. <laughs> I, I like what these consulting uh, yeah. air quotes are. I don't know what they are. No one does. Um, yep. But it, you, I, you were in uh, Captain Phillips, right? Yes. Yes. I Did was. that have anything to do with your consulting? No, that was just Tom Hanks realizing my natural talent. <laughs> I, I actually mentored Tom uh, during that too. So. Of course. Of Let course, me ask yeah. you this. Uh-oh, here we go. How butthurt are you that Tyler Gray is on a show called SEAL Team? You know, it's funny. Here we go. Here we go. I, I specifically know that Tyler did not cast me for that because I was too awesome. One. And number two, every so often, especially on his birthday, I could probably pull it up. I say, happy birthday to the greatest fake seal I know. So um, I get a big fuck you in return. But, you know, hey, you know, I. Uh, Do you flip it on and be like, hey, all right, this is accurate. This is not accurate. With the show? Yeah. They do a pretty good job. There's some things, you know, that some of the times that, you know, that they react to things are a little um, off. But as far as the gear and some of the uh, the movements, know, the movements, yeah. yeah, the the fights, you know, the fire things like that, like the stand around and talking in the middle of firefights, yeah, to you know, drum up drama. That's not. But real. I get it, okay. you know, like same thing. You've got you've got to TV it up. But I tell you, you Tyler is probably well, he, another one, probably one of the most tactically sound guys. I know yeah. I like to fucking joke, but that guy is a fucking savage. A I don't fucking I don't know how else to say it. I mean, with the fucking gimp arm and everything, and I mean that with all due respect. He's he a is fucking a, warrior, He finds man. a way, yeah, dude. Yeah. You know, you look at his arm, it looks like he got in a fight with a shark. We know what happened. You know, he was, he's serving the country, doing yep. the Lord's work, and he's still, he'll be the first one, pull-ups, fucking lift weight. You know, don't let this shit fool you. I love it. I, I love it, and um, I learned a lot from him being on the show. Him and Bert. Yeah, uh, genuinely one of the nicest people in real life. Seriously, too. you yeah. wouldn't Jesus you wouldn't Christ. at all think that he's a stone cold fucking killer. No, you wouldn't. Well. No, and not at all. Yeah. But that is exactly what he stone is. Stone cold. Air quotes, Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like to talk about it. But no, yeah, of course, of course not. Well, he's I, a Navy SEAL now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, yeah, he is. He is at the pinnacle. He's he is graduated. At the best. He's yeah, he's a Navy SEAL now on TV, and there you don't get better than that, really. No. Would you like? Would it damage you emotionally if Bert also got a part on the yes. show? Yes, yes, it would. <laughs> let's start. Let's get a campaign going to get Bert Koontz on SEAL Team. Literally, I would try uh. to sue the network. I would talk to Mark Simos. I would talk to all the guys because they know that one. I am a quarter of an inch taller than Bert. Oh, barely. I have better hair than Bert. Well, that's yeah, true. Yeah, I dye the yeah. beard because I'm grayer than Bert, but I would do so much better than Bert. There's nothing wrong with coloring up, by the way. Not up top. I'm not going to lie, but I'll, I'll let the world know because I have patches of gray. It looks like I have the fucking mange. So if you look at me from a distance, it looks like I just, like Helen Keller shaved me. So my right. wife was like, no, it's either all gray or you. You know, and I, if that's the worst of what I do, you know, I'm not... I'm not some fucking freak. I don't chase kids around. You know, I'm happily married. You know, and Johnny Primo and a bunch of them give me shit all the time. You dye your beard. I'm like, that's all you're coming at me with, bro? Come I, on. Look, do you I dye your pubes too? Color I up. do not. So, so you're gray bush? What's going on down no, there? No, I fucking, it's gone, bro. I keep, because I'm Irish. I got to use all I can to keep that shit as big. I actually hook a light for shadowing down there <laughs> when I'm getting ready to fuck the old lady. He's using forced perspective on his dick. So you got lasered or what? No, I just cut Shave that shit. Off. I just yeah. trim that shit. Yeah, my, totally skin, my skin is too sensitive. I get fucking razor burn if I After shave. this is really? over with, yeah. I'll, I'll take a look. Take it to yeah, <laughs> wait, 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 take a look. From your medic days, right? Yeah. Not, not for... He tricked exactly. me into Here's the problem. That. He and Bert were both medics originally, and Bert was when he was in group. So uh, he's always talking about digital rectal exams and putting his finger up guys' butts. Yeah. What's your experience with this? Back down as hard as you can when he does it. I, and so when you say back <laughs> down, what is that? Are you suppressing your anus? What I'm doing is you just stick the finger out, and I like to like look back. Yeah. Like, oh, you look back and make oh, eye contact. You go into it I further. Back, yeah, I back in, tell him you like That's that. That's a you power like that. move, right? And then there. when we're done, we usually both light up, and it's good. And actually, I requested. I told him that was a prerequisite. I wouldn't go on the show unless Bert stuck his finger up my ass. So Ray has been faking his age for years to get that early digital rectal exam. That's what I just yeah. figured yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then you, you back down as hard as you can on that hard finger as I can. get it all in I there. show him who's the boss immediately. God Sometimes it, I, I try to that. swallow the whole hand. <laughs> 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 Bert takes off his wedding ring if it's, you know, it just depends. <laughs> Sorry, Candace. <laughs> she doesn't care. No, she's fine with it. She yeah. said worse stuff than that today, and I haven't even spoken to her. I just know that she has. Of course, yeah. of course. Uh, so when you get out after 12 years, 
what's that come down like? It, you know, because you're doing the craziest shit on the planet, and then you just stop, right? It's hard because what I've, and again, I know this is going to probably kill me, but what I've learned about most people, society, is they're lazy. People are fucking lazy. Like, for me, my mindset is if you're on time, you're late. If you're early, you're on time. And if you're fucking late, it's unacceptable. People think, you know, hey, like being here, you know, I called him. Hey, man, I'm 10 minutes out. I felt like I was late because I was trying to find the address. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was already in panic mode. I try to be somewhere 15 minutes early. Um... You know, I look a man in the eye and I shake his hand. Posture is everything. It's and, But when you see people these days, they just go through life like, like a horse with fucking blinders on with this carrot and they're just dangling because they're just settling, you know? Yeah. You can tell. It's, you you it's can irritating. walk into a room and see who the fucking alphas are. You know, yeah. you can see. And the thing is, is the alphas, the Burt's, you know, us, they're the people that, that people are drawn to. I call mm. it that magnetic force. People want to be around us. You know, I don't bring much to the table. I just tell it like it is. You know, I'm no, I'm no fucking war hero. You know, I've done a few TV shows, but I'm me. And people get that. You know, like, if I don't like something somebody does, I'm going to say, hey, motherfucker, I don't like that shit. And it can go one or two ways. You know, we can go out back and we talk about it. We can have a, a glass and talk about it like civilized men. Mm -hmm. Or we can go out and beat the fuck out of each other. And hopefully, I know if I knock you out, I'm going to pick you up because I, I, I got, that's how I was brought up. And I'm going to carry you back in here, but I hope you give me that same common courtesy. You know? People like Bert and Tyler the same way, man. Me and Bert have had words before, and Bert's like, hey, man, you know, we could talk about this casually, or you could keep raising your voice, and we can, I'm like, ooh, you know, roger that, brother. I don't mind getting put in check by another fucking alpha. I won't be put in check by fucking beta, though. No. I yeah. will not. It's like driving in traffic sometimes, just going through life, and you're in the, we, we stay in the left lane all yep. the time, yep. and there's people driving slow in the left lane, you're like, dude, you gotta get the fuck out of the way, man. Or I'm gonna run you You've over, that's what I tell people, it's you not, know? No offense, like, you live your life how you want yep. to, but you gotta move, or yeah. something bad's gonna happen, right? Exactly. Do something even if it's wrong, just get the fuck well, out that's of the way. Actually, do it. Just, yeah. That's what I tell people, I don't even care, you know, the average person, I'm all about, you know, life is about decision making. I, because I started doing something that I never did recently when I started getting into this mentorship with these people. I started educating myself. Before about two years ago, I read two books start to finish in my life. I'm not ashamed of it. Do you it. remember what they were? Yeah, it was a call, uh, 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 The Black Beauty or Black Stallion I had to read in school. Yes. Yeah. I'm talking start to finish. And a book called Steroid Blues that I read. It was an amazing book that I read. Was it about Lyle Alzado? No, it's a book about uh, a giant muscle-bound freak who was actually a woman, but he took so many steroids back, he turned into a man, and he was trying to get this drug dealer slash mafia Russian guy who was selling all the drugs, who actually killed his or hers family. It was an amazing book. Holy shit. But Sounds until like then... There's a lot going on. Like I know. Life story. But yeah. until then, you know, I started talking to Evan. You know, I've reached out to him, and they're like, man, you've got to read. So the one thing that I love is decision-making. That's what puts us alphas above the rest. Average person makes 17,000 decisions consciously, subconsciously. Look it up. It's true. But what people do, the difference between the alphas and the betas are, just like we use in the SEAL teams, it's a three-step process to decision-make. Analyze, assess, execute. People go, wait, wait a minute. I'm not execute fucking people. Execute whatever the direction is. But what people do in life is they only do one or two of those. I'll give you an example. My wife, 105 pounds, big fake titties, blonde hair. I love her. She gets in a car and you think she's a 300 pound fucking man that's jacked on steroids because she gets car uh, road rage. Mm -hmm. What does she do? You're not a small man. You're a pretty big dude. Yeah. She'll like give you the finger because all she's doing is executing off of emotion. And that's what society does today. All these fucking protesters and shit. They don't really think about skipping what the analysis. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't do it. They skip. They're looking for the clep version of shit, the quick version. But if you, if you learn how to do it, it's split decision. You know, all three of us go into a room. We have to kill the bad guys, you know, not kill the good, uh, not kill the good guys. We're going to do that. But all three of us are going to go in the room and see different things, but we all have one objective. And that's how, you know, you've got to figure out and make your teams, whether that's your family, you know, your crew and people don't do that. They're just a bunch of individuals being a bunch of bitches, making excuses of why they're not successful. So with your air quote consulting going yes. on right now, is that voluntary or did they recruit you to say, hey, man, we need you to come and do this shit? Well, you, you apply for it, and then you move up to different things when you're do good. Gotcha. So, um, but yeah, you know, but I love it, you know. I still got some warrior left in me. Um, I'm, 
between you, you and I and the however many fans 5. we have 5. here. 5.2 million listeners. Yeah. yeah, hey, hey, guys, this is just our secret. Um, <laughs> I'm transitioning out into the civilian world. It's about time for me to hang up those cleats. You gotcha. Know, I'm going on 48. I look fantastic. I'm not going to lie to either one of you. Mm. Um, Bert, eat your heart out. And I'm going <laughs> to but continue to keep that same drive and that same desire and that same passion and what I'm doing. And that's what I'm doing now. It's those boot camps, making people's lives better. And are you, is this city to city? Are you based out of somewhere? Where, where are these boot camps taking place? Well, right now we have, we have two different ones. I've teamed up with uh, Bedros Koulian. He is the founder of Fit Body Bootcamp. Gazillion dollars, doesn't matter. He's a great dude. So me, him, and three other individuals, uh, a guy named Aaron, Steve Eckhart, and Matt Schneider. So we pretty much, you got a SEAL, you got an entrepreneur. Uh, the Marine is an also a seven-figure entrepreneur, and you got an MMA fighter. We go around, and this is out of Chino Hills, California, and we literally do a 75-hour course where we mentally, emotionally, physically um, beat the shit out of you. And we rebuild Normal people. You. Normal people. Normal people. You know, that's it. We don't, I don't want prior military. I want people that just want to be better. And they want to be better in the three simple things I live by. Family, fitness, and finance. That's it. If you want to, you know, like Latrell, I was just talking to him. He wants to add faith to it, fine. You know, that's just extending the, the house, you know. Family, fitness, and finance is the foundation to be mm -hmm. successful. Um, doing that, and then I branch off and I own a company called Conquer. Conquer is seven points of performance, okay. I think I'm in a room with individuals who've shot guns before. Seven points of performance is how you, you know, if you grab the, the, the platform, like I'm looking at one right now, and you apply those seven points of performance, in the perfect world, you're going to hit the target. Are you going to be an expert shot? No. But if you keep doing it every fucking day, you're going to get better and better and better. So what I do is I use seven simple points of performance for the, each letter of conquer stands for something. Mm -hmm. Do it every fucking day, and eventually your shot group's going to get tighter, and you're going to be an expert in you. If you want to make more money, great. I don't give a fuck about how much money you make. I give a fuck of how great of a person you are to your family and to your friends. So I want to, I want to take this back uh, to family, uh, fitness and finance, fin fitness and finance. Yep. Cause we talked about it briefly before we went on air, but I, I think it's important to tell the audience why you believe in that and what each one of those stands for of to course. people. Because uh, as soon as you explained it before we went on air, uh, it didn't matter if you're, you know, military or civilian. Yep. It, no, it really is supply, true. Yeah. It applies to everyone. It applies and the, to everyone. And the yeah. fitness thing, just to clarify, is not just physical fitness. It's mental and yes. emotional Correct. fitness yes. as well. Like so so ex explain Yeah, that. so yeah. Let's, start, let's start with the, the family, right? Bottom line. Ha you know, we can start with the analogy, happy wife, happy, uh, happy life, happy wife, right? Boom, boom, boom. Give you an example. You own a business. You have a great employee. If something's wrong with that employee and you know he's not firing on all his cylinders, I guarantee he's either having a problem with his family, meaning his wife, the fucking crazy brother-in-law, you name it, because that's what it deals with. Kids not doing good in school, something to that nature. It's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah, basically. What he said. And I yeah. Don't even, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, but I'm, I'm being serious. Yes, that is what it is. Yep. If, it's, if it's fitness, fitness doesn't mean going in the gym and Jack and steals. It means being fit, uh, physically and mentally uh, healthy. So, you know, the fucking demon hasn't snuck up on you. You don't have cancer. You're not getting this. You're not getting that. You're taking care of your body. You're mentally doing things to prepare yourself. You're trying to be a good person. You're reading. You need to be mentally and physically sound. Okay. If I'm sitting here doing a podcast and I've got shit going on physically, like, you know, I'm dealing with this demon in my head. I'm, I'm not going to be looking in the eyes. You're going to start seeing me doing this. And then you're going to be going, what the fuck is this guy here for? What's that old phrase? Uh, distracted warrior is a dead warrior, right? Distracted warrior is a dead yep. warrior. Exactly. You know, you have got to have that front sight focus with everything you do. Cause what I tell people is you have to eliminate distractions in life and you have to call and you have to cause disruption. You have to be the disruptive force when you walk into a room that is just, you know, it's, it's mind boggling and I'll get into that. And then the last one is finance. Here's the deal, guys. Money doesn't make people happy. Okay. I'm happy right now and I could be, I could have more money, but this is what I'll tell you. What I'm learning is because I'm starting to become an entrepreneur, the more money that I make, the more I can do with it. Example, the more money I can give away, the more money I have to have people do shit that I don't have to do. You know, people that I know that are very, very wealthy, they pay people to go take their cars to get done. They pay people to do this. They pay, pay people to do their shopping. You know why? Because that gives them more time to focus on just those three fucking things to make more money, to be mentally and physically more sound. And what? 
to spend more time with your family. Yeah. You know, I just got back from a, uh, I was in California for five days. I picked my daughter up from gymnastics and I said, you know what? Today I'm going to take her out to lunch. Where do you want to go? Daddy will take you anywhere. That's what you have to do. And what I'm trying to teach people is it's what I call the F7 mentality. And people go, what the fuck is that? An F7, do you know what an F5 is? No. Okay, F1 through fives are tornadoes. They're supposed to be, the F5 is supposed to be the finger of God, the most destruct, destructive force in the planet. Fuck that, I am. So what's the difference between an F5 and an F7 in this? An F5 will jump around and hit homes. I got in an argument with a meteorologist in Virginia Beach, and he goes, you know, an F5 feeds off our power and this and that, and that's why it jumps. I said, no, it doesn't. It fucking jumps because it knows it can't fuck with that. It knows that it's found a force stronger than that. So I tell people, instead of the F6, I'm the F7. I'm going to have, I'm going to be a millionaire when it comes to my family. I'm going to be a millionaire when it comes to my fucking health, not just fitness. And I'm going to be a millionaire. That's my goal to make that kind of money. You know why? Because I'm going to give a shit ton of it away and help people who were just like me once who, Hey, I don't care. You know, I've overcome a lot of shit. I've had a claim bankruptcy before years ago. I did it. I'm not ashamed of it. You know, I could have sat there and fucking wallowed in my own fucking piss and shit. And said, you know what? I give up, but I didn't. I said, okay, pay this shit off and it'll be better. And now, you know, it's just things, good things are happening because I believe karma is a bitch and a motherfucker. And if you do good, good will come back, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, again, before we came on, we were chatting about this and I was like, man, I really want you to tell this story to the audience yeah. because I, I believe it's true in everyone's yeah, life. Yeah, I don't care who you but are. But I've never heard it simplified like that before. You know, you know, military guy sitting beside me, you know, keep it simple, stupid. I really believe that you just got to trim the fat with shit in life. You got to come to the basics. You know, that's one of my analogies with my conquer ac acronym is trim the fat. If you got people or things or anomalies in your life that are fucking holding you back, drowning you, I use the analogy, you're swimming. Someone's pulling you down so you can't breathe. Kick them in the fucking face and let them go. I've literally had to let my mother go. I've had to let personal close friends go and it hurts for a little bit, but like I tell people, hurt, pain, doubt, all these negative emotions, they're temporary. You know, being, a, being a, the best version of you is permanent, and that's what people need to understand. Yeah. And bad news doesn't get better with time either. No, it doesn't, people, man. People, it just fucking get, it gets, it gets it way festers, worse. Yeah. yeah. Like there's, the, I, th I feel like part of that laziness and, and I don't know about other cultures, but specifically in American culture is just to ignore shit that's going wrong. And to see what happens, that's a fucking wrong idea. Yeah. Everybody Fuck wants that. to put shit on a, on a shelf and, and just deal with it later. And that's why, like, my, my whole situation with my brain and just, like, spouting shit out sometimes, it, yeah. it had those consequences of that. And we've, we've dealt with some of those. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we've had some definite fallout uh, from those. But, <laughs> but I don't, like, if there's, a, there, if there's tension in the room or, or, or in my life or in some way, I always just, my brain just works that way. Luckily for me, I just say, I'm like, hey, this is stupid. Let's change this. And dispassionately say that. But I don't think people are good at that, to be honest. Like, I don't, I don't know if it's hopefulness or laziness or naivety or whatever it is, but. I think, I think a lot of people, you push things off until tomorrow or the next day or the yeah. next day or the yeah. next day. Um, and then, you know, you look around and it's, it's like the, the, your yeah. shelf analogy yep. where it's like, oh man. Now all my shelves are cluttered with all of this shit. I agree. Because I, I kept pushing it off. And yep. I was like, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then you don't, and it's too late. And then your life is a fucking mess, and your, your, your house is dirty and shit. Well, somewhere down the line, people got the panties twisted, and they got it wrong. And this is what I tell people. You know, I tell people to come up with a daily life motto. So my daughter has one, and I tell people, do this. It's fucking homework at all my seminars. First thing you do when you wake up, even before you take your morning piss, look in the mirror. My daughter's is, I'm a winner, I'm a champion. She says that every day. Before she goes to bed, it's the last thing she says. Me, I'm a little different. Most people prolong greatness. I put off being fucking average. I say, it's my word, be, be great today, be a bitch tomorrow. What does that mean? I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna do the maximum workforce I can. I'm gonna go to bed with the intentions that, you know what, tomorrow I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna sleep in and I'm gonna rest. Well, guess what? That alarm goes off at six fucking 19 every morning. I get up and bo go, be great today, be a bitch tomorrow. Why, why, six yeah, why 619? I get up at 619. Here you go. You ready for this? I'm yeah. going to say it fast. Hang on. I get up at 619. My wife gets up at 625. 619, I get up. I take the dog out. I bring her downstairs. I, I give her dog food. I pull out the chicken broth. I put it in the microwave for 10 seconds. She eats. Then I take her out to 
the, the bathroom again and shits. It's 6.23. I get up. I pull out the creamer, two creamers, the sugar into two coffee things. Then what I do, I have one minute left. I, I mentally go over what my three F-bombs are and how I'm going to attack life. My wife comes downstairs. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. She's either going to go like this for a kiss or she's going to tell me to fuck off until she has her <laughs> cup of coffee. But those few minutes or my few minutes to do what I need to do so I already get up and I have a sense of accomplishment. Then my wife takes my daughter to the gymnastics and then I go to the gym. But guess what? Before she goes to the gym, and this is it, she leaves at 7.25. For six minutes, I make the bed, clean up all the shit, we go, and then I meet her at the gym. But that's our, our pattern of life, yeah. a pattern of fucking life. It's what you need to do. And what I've learned how to do is instead of getting up and wasting fucking time, because time is our most precious commodity. It's the only yes. one you can't get care. back. Exactly. I don't care yeah. how fucking rich you are, what color you are, if you're a he, she, a shim, it's going to treat us all equally. So my thing is do what you can with what you fucking got. Yeah. That's what I do. And I say it every day. My daughter does it. All I'm doing is programming people to be great. And I, whenever I do my seminars, they're like, but we're not programmed. Here, watch this. You ready? You guys, are not, this is not, not scripted. What do you do before you look across the street? Look both ways. Look both ways. What color is a red light? Red. Is it, what, what is an oven? What is a stove? It's something to cook in. And is it hot or cold? Hot. There you go. You've, you've already been programmed since birth to know this shit. Yeah, and it yeah. takes 21 days to create a new habit, by the way. 21 days of doing the same thing every single day. This is basic like psychology. It takes 21 days. 2190 yeah. is the terminology. Yeah. There's things I agree 90 with. 90 to break. And it's 21, 21 days yeah. is a habit. 90 days is supposed to be a lifestyle. Yeah. I don't believe in 90 days is a lifestyle. I'll call it out because in 90 days, I knew my lifestyle wasn't going to be a Navy SEAL. I could have still failed. But what I tell people is my last thing of conquer is repetition. I am fucking 7-Eleven. I get up every fucking day. There's 20, I wish there were more hours in a day, and I'm going to do the best I can every day. I don't sleep. I don't fucking rest. God rested on Sunday. I don't. I use Sunday for a day of reflection. Monday, I come out of the gate like a fucking thoroughbred, and it's a new chapter in my book, and I just, I'm writing the pages because see what people do, what the betas do is they let society write their fucking book. That's what I did until I was 19. You're going to be a loser. You're going to go to jail. I spent some time fucking locked up. I was doing drugs. And then I finally said, you know what? Fuck this shit, man. I'm going to write my own fucking book. You know, I wanted a, a, and they live happily ever fucking after. And that's what I'm doing. I don't let anybody dictate who I am, who I'm going to be, or what I'm going to become. Never. Man, I, dude, we, you're an inspirational guy. I want to get to some of your crazy fucking stories here. Oh, after this. yeah. We, we get some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be oh, on I'll the air. I'll give you crazy shit. You're one of those dudes, man, and it's rare that we have on the show. And again, we've done 450 of these fucking things mm -hmm. where you just jump right in. You're like, da -da 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 -da. I just want to talk to this guy forever. Uh, apologize to the sponsors, but they're the best in the biz. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. You sleep on a ghost bed? Ah, you should. You should have a ghost bed in your life. You should get a ghost bed. Yeah. yeah. The best beds on the planet. Best beds on the planet. 15% uh, off forever for military and first responder. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. It's a true story. Yeah. Uh, scroll down to the bottom of the page. Boom. Uh, the, you're, you're there. Forever. All of their products. Ghost pillows. Mattresses. The, the ghost luxes. The adjustable bases. Those are amazing. Uh, they got USB ports. Uh, they got all what, what, the flashlights on them too. There's everything on there. Yeah. Everything on these goddamn things. It turns things. into a UFO in case you want to get involved in the Area 51 thing, the whole <laughs> shit. I'm saying you could probably take your adjustable base with the mattress on it up to Area 51 on September 20th to storm it. As always, 36 months, pay as you go. No interest program. No one on the internet is offering that. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get it. Uh, next up. We've got buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Some of the best headphones in the biz. You can hear things through them you very can. well. Yeah, you and can. They don't you want, you want some of those? Ears. I need them. Yeah. I need them. Yeah, you, you, can have, you can have a pair if you want, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, we, look, we reached out to uh, Beats by Dr. Dre, and they were like, no. The headphones are too expensive. Um, you know, what are they, fucking $300? They're ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. These, boom, 70 bucks. At uh, buyraycon.com uh, forward slash drinking bros knocks them down to 50. You can sweat at them. Best wireless uh, headphones in the biz. You just put them in a little box to recharge. What is it? 5,000 hours. 
Five, uh, no, it's 2,000 hours of standby and yep. five hours of active playing. Of active playing. Which is so, a lot. That's a lot of time. Look, you could run a fucking marathon in these things, and they, you'd still be good to go. I could if not. If you're Kenyan, you could do two marathons in them, yeah. and you'd be good to go. Or if you're that guy, that old man from L.A., you could run a marathon, fake it, and then die in a ditch. Oh, later. boy. Did he take his own life? I don't know yet. We yeah. haven't heard anything about that or we don't, Tyler Scott. He's, te- he's texting trying to find out now. Let yeah, us he, know. <laughs> uh, go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Today, get these headphones. Again, that'll give you 20% off. Knock them down right around in the 50 range. Uh, last but not least, we've got expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Cybersecurity. Look, if you're planning on raiding Area 51 like we are, yep. you want to keep your private information private. Yep. You don't want the government looking into your shit. No. You, don't, you definitely don't want China and uh, Russia <laughs> looking into your shit, right? <laughs> you don't want these uh, scammers getting your information and exploiting you you're going to need that money to bail yourself out of jail yes and pay your medical expenses after you try and raid area 51. exactly the only way you're going to keep your area 51 knowledge safe is <laughs> expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros seven bucks a month runs in the background of uh your, your laptops Oops. iphones uh desktops you name it keep your shit safe uh at, at that drinking bros site you get three months off which is amazing shit's only seven bucks a month uh what were you guys sexting back and forth to one another over there are you gonna share i I like old school we've got we're drinking out of handles and shit over here ray's Ray's got this special talent yeah and it's in a i'm not gonna say how i found out about it because it's unfortunate but he he can i i struggle to call it jerking off because it's not really jerking off but he can make himself come without his hands i'm sorry I'm going to back that up. Without yeah. your hands? Yeah. I can make myself come without touching myself. How? And when did you figure this out? Well, I learned how to do this as a young boy, a troubled teen. In no, Catholic um, school. <laughs> <laughs> I was lost. I was scared. No, I was a gymnast. And I learned how to do it. Wait, and were I, you really a gymnast? I really was for a, a while. A male gymnast. A male gymnast. Untouched. Untouched. You didn't Man. get molested by a... Uh... I didn't make the cut. No, I didn't. <laughs> so that, I bring that up because Ross is also super butthurt about not having been molested. You know, it's one of those things. Uh, just by an older woman, you know. Yeah. Uh, and again, that's why I started my program too, Fathers Without uh, Boundaries, um, <laughs> where, I, where I help out. I mentor these sorority girls that are 21 to 22 years old, and uh, you know, it's kind of I a. Can, the it's next girls step with in life. daddy issues, and he plays the he role plays of the daddy. daddy. I yeah, got yeah, it. Well, yeah, yeah. A couple more of these, and I'll come over and molest you for free. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, look, just a finger uh, just somewhere, a finger. just to let me know that back I'm alive. Back down, yeah, back and down. Yeah, back. Make sure you back down. You don't want to skip that. So, as a gymnast, yes. How yeah. did you figure it out? Was it the pants? I was on the horse. I was. I oh, was, the pummel horse. Yeah, I was. Ele- I was. Ex- I was, and I could do it here. I'm not going to, but. It's all about positioning. So literally, it's all about if I took these two chairs and I kind of positioned myself and I suspended my... Is you know, your penis on anything or is it airborne? It is airborne. Okay. So I'm you, really impressed. I same here. You. You, so you can get a full erection. Full erection. So how I would do it right now is I, I don't wear underwear, but if I had underwear on, I did this. This is when I made my name in Buds. Third phase of Buds. Okay. Okay. Uh, he goes by Cade Courtley. Who owns uh, Victory Coffee? You, uh-huh. can, you can you can call him and ask him this. We had fifty some people in our class, third phase, and this story had been told. It's like you know they're telling tour. It's like coming down from the hills. The Navajo Indians are telling these stories of Ray Cash Care. So <laughs> a, a gentleman by the name of Warren Officer Turcott came in, and he's from South, and he's like, "Hey, Gabby," I'm like, "Yes, sir." He's like, "I hear you can fucking make yourself come without touching yourself," and I sound just like him. And I said, "Yes, sir, I can." Well, I want to see that, which kind of threw me off yeah, yeah that's a weird request it, it is, is a weird, weird request, request but I'm, I'm kind of there to, i like unless you see something like yeah, this it, you don't it's, believe it it's, it's good like yeah. a and, I, and i'm, I'm yeah. all about don't ever ask me you know i won't i'll step up and do it yeah so one thing leads to another and i said okay but there's a few rules and he's like oh you're giving me rules i said well i have to concentrate so what they did was is we have a beer party in third phase everybody chips in. i said we chip in a little bit more and the money goes we have a big beer party he said done I said, number two, I have to be double blindfolded and have double ear uh, pro because if I hear anybody, I won't be able to focus. So he says, done. So we walk into, we have these little barracks and everybody's crammed in there with like four instructors. Just hot as, it's just like swamp ass in there, right? There's like 55 guys in there, just fucking alphas. 
and they blindfold me. And what happens is, is I had my UDTs on back. Excuse me. No, we had a, uh, we were in a camis. We had camis. We switched to camis and we had the, you know, the compression shorts. Yeah. So what I do is I go like this, I show them my junk and I say, you see compression shorts are, there's nothing in it, you know, and they're checking Roger that. I mean, that got guys faces right by my junk. Yeah. So they double, they, they blindfold me, do all this shit. And he literally goes, I swear to God, he goes, if any of you motherfuckers talk, I'll kill y'all. So I said, okay. So I get up my position and I'm holding and I'm fucking holding and I'm fucking holding. Right. And they can kind of see that I'm getting hard, you know, and I'm, you know, you, how long, so how, uh, how it long took is me, this? It takes, it's about two or three minutes. I mean, I have to, I've got some, this is not from lifting weights. This is from not getting pussy when I was young. Yeah. Tries so, for the guys, obviously. Yeah. 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 You, know, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. You're out here. But anyway, so I finish. I drop down. I pull everything off. And there's 55 guys doing this. And they're looking at me. And I fucking undo my shit. Pull my shit down. I'm like three, three, you know, because that shit goes down quick when you got a bunch of guys looking at your junk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I fucking r just go like this. And Lily, I got cum in my hand. And it's just dead silence. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get that kicked out of here for being a fucking freak. And all of a sudden, one officer Turcos just goes, yeah, and it's just a fucking huge roar and stuff. <laughs> but you could call Kate Courtley of Victory Coffee and you ask him about it and it still haunts his fucking dreams. So do you, do you need to be wearing something or can you do it nude? No, I could do it nude. Do you think I, I fucking banged my wife when I first met her? Dude, it's the greatest fucking line pickup line i said you know what you are so hot that i want to do something for you that i've never done for anybody else oh, and she's money. like what i said i can make myself come without touching myself and she's like what i'm like yeah i love you baby and i did it for her and lily by this time she's just fucking dripping wet she's like if you got anything left let's do it and i guess never look back that's amazing yeah so that's I like, amazing. I like that should be so we were talking last night about which uh new sport should be in the olympics yeah, you, that I one. think that but I don't know anybody else who can do. It. I've never that heard would it. trump the video game shit that they're talking about doing. I will stop watching the Olympics. I'm already pissed off with the Olympics. Don't get me started with the flag. Don't get me started. Yeah, with the whole flag issue. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah, but I think you, jerking off without touching yourself. It's a race would be I would probably be the, the I'd be the Olympic champion. You're not far away because yeah, they're talking about video games and they're talking about uh, break dancing. Yeah, so the wind tunnel thing is already in, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So I think mine would I think mine would really cause a, a ruckus. Does your daughter have a shot at it? Uh I think right now she has a shot for Division 1 college. I just uh you know, you never want to sit she's got the drive. I just think she she's going she's in level 6, but from what I've heard from how the girls are that have gone to the Olympics, they would already at her age be level 8, level 9. So but you know what? I'll take a Division 1 athlete. She's definitely I, I see Oklahoma, excuse me, uh, Alabama or UCLA in our future. Really? Yeah, she's good. She's uh, fucking have good. They have, are they recruiting her now? Uh, I had an in with the UCLA Bruins. I used to be their motivational uh, coach. Aunt, nice. Beck, Aunt Becky over here is about yeah. to get himself Aunt thrown Becky in jail. Aunt Becky is about to, to Listen, bribe. Have you bribe heard in. about the, uh, the college admission scandals in Southern California For and celebrities? elsewhere? No. Like Aunt Becky from Full House paid a bunch of money. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I actually, um, uh, what's it? P. Diddy's son. Yes. Um, I've worked with him. Did you hear Justin. about Justin? Is that his name? Uh, I can't remember. He, he was an idiot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, P. But P. Diddy and Sal Alosi, the football coach, got into it. I was there when that whole issue happened. No shit. Yeah. P. Diddy is not a small man, but he is not a Sal Alosi. Sal Alosi was, uh, was a strength and conditioning coach for the NFL. He is not a small man. And uh, I told him, boy, you better fuck, be careful what you're doing here. You know, P. Diddy didn't walk in there with his posse. But uh, yeah, he... Uh, he got tuned the fuck up real quick. That's funny, man. Yeah. I, look at, I look at those celebrities, especially their kids, because, look, when you're that famous, you expect your kids to be like, oh, man, well, my kid's going to be famous. You can push oh, yeah. them and make them do this. You, you can't at, at something as physical as, as college athletics. Yeah, like his son was lazy, and, too. Yeah. But after the issue happened, the son stayed on the team somehow because a large donation was made somewhere um, but, you know, if that would have been you or I, our asses would have been fucking, you know, probably kicked oh, off gone. the team. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and when, wasn't Snoop Dogg's kid? It was the same thing with him, well, no, too, Well, no, no, right? no. I'll tell you what. Snoop Dogg's kid is a man of honor. He showed up. His whole life, he was pushed too hard by his father. He was, he was talented, but he didn't have, he didn't want it. Right. He showed up. They went to summer practice, uh, summer training, which is, a, it's horrible. And he literally walked up to the coach, shook his hand, Jim Moore, who's a very good friend of mine, and said, sir, this isn't for me. At least he went out like a man. Now, the repercussions of him and his father, I don't know. Oh, you don't want to Snoop Dogg, I'm sure, smoke some off for that. But, um, but he was a man about it. You know, yeah. he, he didn't make excuses. He, and 
Snoop Dogg is actually a very intellectual guy. You know, he plays mm-hmm. the whole, oh, but yeah. he's a very no, he's smart a, dude. He's a really good businessman. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah, because I, I watched that show. With, yeah, when, it, the, when it was he was him and his kid, and you know, he's hard as fuck on his kid. Man, he demands perfection. Was he every trying step. to go to USC or some shit? Where was because Snoop's a huge USC fan. Yeah, it was yeah. USC or or, UC, or, or, the, UCLA, or the Bruins. Yeah. He went. He got his pick. It was one of the two. Oh. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that wasn't surprising at all. How'd you get the nickname Cash, by the way? Uh, so my originally I was Care Bear. Last name's Care. Boy, that's real fucking hard. Uh, when I started <laughs> doing some other work, um, there was the name Care Bear was taken by a lady named Karen. Uh, I had a cash shirt. That's, that's kind of a, a nice thing, though, right? It is. You know, it cash was, sounds cooler than it, Care it Bear. It does sound cool. Oh, it this, does. Is my, this is my hard ass buddy Care Bear over yeah, here. Yeah, it's not sexy. I'm not going to lie. It didn't get me laid. Um, <laughs> cash, a little bit, but. Uh, I showed up and, you know, I just transitioned out of the military. When you transition out of the military, I know he can, he can attest, but they tell you you're never going to amount to anything. At least with me, they did. You're never going to fucking amount to anything. You're going to come back here. You're a fucking piece of shit. They give you, you get, very little information, yeah, you especially know, your local command because they're trying to get you to stay. They want in. you to stay. Yeah. So, you know, the, everybody's out there is going to eat you for breakfast. You're going to get butt fucked every yeah. day. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, wife, kid, we're talking about having another one. You know, I show up somewhere. Um, hadn't slept in about four days and I had a cash shirt on a big Johnny pre Joaquin Phoenix. I was a cash fan. Sure. Yeah. Old school. And they just said, Hey, we're going to call you cash. And the running joke was I was so fucking tired. My attention to detail was I, uh, why the fuck are you calling me cash? After about four hours, I looked down and I'm like, Oh, and it just stuck, you know? <laughs> so I wish, I always wish it was a, a sexier fucking story. And you know, when I tell people they're like leaning in and then I tell them the story, they're like, you're a fucking idiot. I'm like, but it's, you know, I, uh, yeah, I can I, sex it up for the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the ladder. I thought for sure you were going to be like, man, I killed so many people. I they said there I was I money was. in the bank. They called me cash. I jerked off for Joaquin Phoenix not, without using my hand. No, it's just, that's it, man. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Where do you live right now? I am in Virginia beach. Uh, just haven't pulled away, pulled chalks from the teams. I'm ready to get the fuck out of there. You know, it's, it's one of those things when you get out of that military world, you just, I'm like Helen Keller. I'm deaf, dumb, and blind. I don't know what the fuck goes on anymore. Nor, nor do I care. Is I there mean, a lot of seals that live in Virginia Beach? Oh my god, Sean oh, yeah. Matson's up there too. Oh god, Strike Force. Yeah, yeah. And, Sean's a good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. half the goddamn seals. That half get the out seal population. Why, why is that? Why there? Because that's where they're stationed. That's where ah, we're stationed. Okay. For the they're same reason, Indiana. there's still a bunch of fucking eighty second dudes from Bragg out to here, yeah. and there's a bunch of Marines up in Jacksonville. It's the same reason. Gotcha. They just yeah. don't leave. Afterwards. I mean, it's just. You, you know, you walk into a bar, it's pilots on one side, seals on the other. That you take your pick, what you want, ladies. Yeah. yeah. Especially in the bars I hang out in. Regular shoes don't come there, but yeah. Yep. That's funny. They try to sneak in, but we fucking get the fuck out of here. That's where, our pussy. Where are you gonna head to? Right now, of all places, don't don't kick me off the show for this. We're looking at California with Bedros Coolian. So Ooh. Um, but in Chino Hills, they're they're much more republic oriented town. So I literally have about a 20 mile radius and then otherwise I'm fucked. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Um, that's a big move. You know, we, there's a lot of decision that has to go on. Bottom line, that means if my wife will say yes or no, but I want to get out of Virginia. It's fucking swamp. I mean, literally my nuts are constant. I mean, you move to Virginia beach, just like here, they, they issue you a fucking spatula. My nuts are stuck to the side of my leg yep. for fucking six months out of the year. Big one of my gold bond community. Yeah. yeah well, oh, yeah. I got I got swamp ass right now. I GB me. up every morning. One, yep. of, one of my dad's friends had this idea for a little fucking net that goes around your bean bag, and then there's a string that comes up, and it comes up through your through a loop in your collar here, yeah. and you can just like bite and pull up, lift your nuts up off your legs. I think you it, should just be able to like you know have the assless chaps. You should just be able to have your nuts. Kind of like that nuts hang out so they can with a little fan hook there. Yeah. And you just walk. I mean, I don't know how it would work, but I mean, I haven't, I haven't mastered it yet, but I'm going to trademark it. Well, the thing is this too, if you shave up down there and you oh, don't, yeah. uh, if you shave up down there too, it gets a little wetter. So there's a lot of pockets down there. Yeah. Um, You're saying the, the more pubes you have, the more it absorbs the moisture. I mean, correct. I yeah. can show you right yeah. now if you want to see how my shit's looking. No. Yeah, how is your shit looking? You really uh, want to see? Yeah. No. You need to start at a two, I think, on a, on a clipper and then go down. Yeah. I, I, I stay with two. I mean, so, so if gonna, I, I keep it. Yeah, he's going to. There, look at that. Look at that right there. That's look, look the, that's his, that's his best We're going to have to blur get. that out of the show. We're definitely going to have to blur that out. But I'm going to be honest. That's impressive. And when you have a ball shave like that, yeah. that's yeah. a that's a cold water dip, is it not? 
Oh yeah, yeah it is, of course. Yeah, so you cold water dip it and that's the only way you can shave I, it. What I like to do is just get in a shower and I like to pull them up and just go on. I like to do the undercarriage first and yeah, work yeah, around. Yeah. I work around the sides. I use and, an electric shaver because it gets a more uniform shave for me because I don't go all the way to the skin. But oh the, no. The problem is I nick myself on a frequent basis. Oh, I've basis. done that many a time. And I'm, sure. even with I'm, this, I'm always afraid if I do it, like I try to time it where I'm not going to be around anybody just in case I make a mistake because I'm like, oh, that Nick looks a little bit like herpes right there. <laughs> so let's avoid that. Oh, yeah, I got some war wounds from that shit. But my wife brings a good point up. She's like, you know, do you want to be going down on me with a big wad of fucking hair in your no. mouth? I'm like, no. She's like, well, do you fucking think I do? So, you know, we made, you know. You made a conscious decision. We did it at marriage counseling. We decided it was time. <laughs> yeah. That's the only reason to go to marriage counseling is decide how each of you are going to trim your pubes. Oh, yeah. oh that's that's probably number one in that list. It's definitely number I one. I don't know what color my wife's hair really is because she's like a dirty blonde, but she doesn't have any hair on her whatsoever. So I don't fucking know. She could be a brunette for is all she is, is she as shorn as you? Like that's both of you guys are bald okay. eagles? Oh, did you? I thought you said Uncle shorn. Sam's. Oh, yeah. Shorn, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's fucking nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that shit. Smooth, silky. like a baby, <laughs> like a baby, brother. <laughs> Sorry, I licked your mic. I apologize. No, no we fun. lick these mics every day. Yeah, well, every day somebody's licking those. Charlie Sheen was on before you. Oh, so you, you Jesus Christ! <laughs> Can I take this home? <laughs> oh my God! Look at the pussy I got on my face now. Well, pussy and AIDS, but hey, and you AIDS, know what? Yeah. Only poor people die of AIDS now, so you're good. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, by the way, uh, also, some, so this is the first time, shockingly, that somebody's pulled out their dick and balls on the air that wasn't fucking. It wasn't fucking true, yeah. Because um, on on episode one hundred, we had two strangers who had never met have sex live on air. Um, so that guy's dick, we definitely saw. That's awesome. Yeah, he was he was a quick draw with that. Did too. he snort some penile enhancement? Oh, for some Roman? Yeah, some getroman dot com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. Yeah, sponsor. We got a boner sponsor on here. I'm um, in. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, he, I think he did. So th my guess is because he fucked for about two and a half hours yeah. on the show. Yeah. Um, my guess is that he had, <laughs> he had preed up, sprinkled up the drink beforehand. Yeah. And his performance was, to this day, uh, amazing in front of a, a group of dudes. Probably your story beats it with coming in front of all that, that many dudes. Yeah. yeah, how many dudes in phase three of Buds are left? Like 50, maybe? Well, originally there was only 16 of the original of us. But like, you know, the guys that got hurt prior got rolled in our class. There was... 50, 51 or 55, I think 55 of us plus four instructors. Yeah. So 59 people crammed in a room smaller than this. So it was, it was breathtaking. That is amazing. It was like I was in prison all over again. Yeah. How, how was prison, by the way? How, it was lock up just for fighting and stupid shit. It was good. It was, uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I like the, you know, the same thing. Uh, jelly in the jam. Yeah. Where was it? In Baltimore. Balt is, is that where you're from? Oh, shit. I'm from Baltimore. Is that what part of Baltimore? Dundalk. Wow. Is that as, is it, is as bad as it, you it's think it is? It's white trash. I'm literally from like the white trashest part of fucking Baltimore there is. And I'm, I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I know. How, how, long, how long were you in prison? Oh, no. I just spent some time. I spent a couple weeks in lockup. It's just one of those things. Just stupid fighting and shit. I've done that. Uh, community service a couple times. Mainly for fighting. I just got in a lot of stupid fights. Doing stupid shit. The, the main one I got into, I have a, my sister, a big kid younger than me, but he was like 240 pounds, did some stuff, and he was like bullying my sister. And in a McDonald's parking lot, I took a roll of fucking nickels, mm -hmm. and I fucking started smashing his head in with him. Um, but he was, real, he was like your size, so I had to like jump up and get him down, and I guess I put him down pretty hard. And that's, it was like Mike Tyson's punch-out game where you got to <laughs> But gotta my mom's, But at the time, my mom's one husband was a police officer, so I had to spend, that was a, I had to spend a couple, you know, there were some things I'd deal with, but he got me out of it. But, you know, I defended my sister, so I mean, yeah. Fuck you. You yeah, know, the guy who wants to be a bitch. And, exactly. And it, yeah. and it got happened to him is what happened. You got dealt with. It got happened to him is don't what happened. Say, I tell don't don't ever count me fucking out. I'll find a way. <laughs> What's your dream for the future with everything you got going on right now? Um, Let's see. Just to keep helping people. You know, my boot camps, I want to make them. I want to be able to work so much with my boot camps that I can get a crew underneath me to just go out. Because like I said, I define success as helping other people help themselves. Um, want to make it, you know, I'm not going to be lie to you. I want to make a shit ton of money so I can give a lot of, a lot of money away. I like helping people, you know, I only need so much fucking fortune. And then after that, it's just, it's just doing good deeds, you know, right. Stopping off, giving, you know, seeing a guy on the side of the road. I did that the other day. He's like, I need a meal. So come with me, put some fucking bum in my car. I took him to Chick-fil-A and bought him a meal. He was like, like, I'm not going to eat cash, but I'll give you food. He ate the shit. I drove him back and he said, thank you. I mean, really? Yeah, I don't fuck it. Why not, man? Yeah, yeah of course. You know, I, I hope someone would do that for me. You know, I, I like to have fun and, and goof off, but I try to, I really try helping people. 
That's fucking awesome, man. Dude, look, this has been one of our best shows ever. You're a super inspirational guy. Where can everybody find you online? Uh, you can find me at uh, my website is uh, www.frogmindset.com. Check it out. Okay. Or give me a follow on Instagram, Ray Cash Care. It's that fucking simple. I don't, I have Facebook, but I'd rather just do the Instagram um, because I got all these people catfishing me and shit. Just hit me up on those two sites if you need me. For sure. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. This is uh, the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week. Somebody who's inspired you or helped you become the man you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? I'd probably like you give it to Bedros Cooley, and he's the one who's been really mentoring me for about the last six months to be a better man, mentally, physically, emotionally, and has helped me work on that F7 fucking mindset. And, where, and how did you guys meet? We met actually at a speaking engagement down in Miami, Florida, and we just hit it fucking off, dude. He was just like, wow. Because like you, what you see is what you get. I, don't, I won't act different in front of you than I would if fucking President Trump was right here. I would, I'm the same. I cuss, I'm loud, I don't give a fuck. And like I said, you like me or you hate me. There is no in between. I don't grow on people. You either, it's an immediate attraction or a big fuck you. Right. Yeah, that's it, man. I wish, I wish, I wish it was different. It isn't, it isn't. No. And uh, I wish we sold those shirts of Bert Koontz, by Bert the way. Bert Koontz, I love you. <laughs> uh, Ray, man, this was an absolute pleasure, dude. Uh, you're a great guy. Uh, Thank you, sir. Honor is all mine. And Thank I, you for showing me your dick, by the way. That's a nice thing. You know, we just met, and it's, it, that, that's a nice show of friendship of like, mm-hmm. hey, man, I trust you enough. Here's my dick and balls. Wait till we get off air. Oh, God damn it. Hard you, back in. I'm going to hard back, back into down. that finger. You guys have, uh, you and Jason Redman have a podcast, right? Yes, we do. We have a podcast right now. Thank you for actually asking, reminding me of that. Uh, it's called the JR Overcome Show, but come tomorrow, we're actually changing it to Overcome and Conquer. Um, we wanted I like that a, name better, by the way. We do, because Overcome is his business and Conquer is mine. Okay. And we just wanted to have something that wasn't just driven by our names. You know, I, I think it's cool that I was a Navy SEAL and he was a Navy SEAL, but we're more than that. You know, we're fucking good human beings and we bring people and we'd love to have you guys on mm-hmm. just to talk about doing great shit. You know, you, we goof off, we have fun, but I know you guys do a lot for the community. You, you all do. We know this. And I think people need to hear about that. We're, hey, we're down, man. Anytime you want us on, we'd love to come on, man. Roger that. Uh, are you guys based out of Virginia Beach? Virginia Beach. It's Great. it's not as sexy as this, but you know what? We still get it done. Hey, I, look, I'm in it. I Any, like Virginia anything Beach. Anything with a beach, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to be the ghetto compared to this right now. What, we're, what I'm sitting in, it's the ghetto. I mean, you're so fucking big. It's going to be tough. It might be that room like with 55 guys, but we'll make it happen. We don't give a shit, though. Good. That's None what I like. None of us ever care, dude. We yes. actually did. So last year for the, uh, for the opening game of the NFL season, we did a podcast in the back of, of a fucking Uber on the way up to New York, I yeah. believe. That's yeah, we, awesome. We do a podcast in the back yeah, of Uber. We um, we're doing a, a house party show. So we're showing in up Orlando, one of Drinking yeah. Bros' house um, and just doing a fucking house party on a Friday night live show. That's August 23rd. That's in, insane. In Orlando? Yeah. So, like, anywhere we go, we don't, we don't give a shit. So. Roger that. You're with the right people here. I'm going <laughs> to send up the fucking bat sign so you guys are coming running. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. Please we'll do, there. man. Uh, Ray. This was a pleasure, man. Yep. D'Anthony, you were, you, you were taking down a few pegs today, which I liked, you know? Was I? I, I feel like he, uh, he, he al- alpha'd you today. I've never shown my dick on the show before. That's you for haven't? Sure. No. Show me. How show do me you now. feel now? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Our producer's got enough work blurring out this one Irish dude's dick. <laughs> he doesn't need two of them for, the, for this. Sorry, producer. I apologize. <laughs> I got caught in the moment. <laughs> I don't like to not deliver, man. <laughs> Oh, it's fucking awesome. So if you see Ray Cash or Care out in the wild, all you know, all, all you got to do is ask and he'll show you his dick, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just ask if you, Cash. If you don't learn anything dick. else from this show, just free drinks you know, for Cash's yeah. dick, dude. Boom. He'll, he'll pull it out anywhere. Boom. Uh, <laughs> for, for Ray, D'Anthony, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.